God in prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this word. Lord, we need your word. We need your anointing in our lives. We need your anointing, God, to come forth through our lives. So we yield ourselves to you this morning. We yield our ears to you to hear what you have to say. I pray, God, as I deliver what I have, Lord God, in my notes, that you would take this and bring revelation to your word, your word to your people. So we thank you right now. We thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. And I'm believing in my spirit that each and every one will be changed in some way. Before we leave here today, God, there will be a change in us. There will be a change in us, God. We would leave these doors, God. We won't, we won't leave like we came here. We're going to leave more anointed. We're going we're gonna to leave with more knowledge. We're going we're gonna to leave, leave here with more insight into your word. So we thank you right now, Father. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Releasing the anointing through a broken vessel. If you will go to the next screen, I want to go back to my illustration here. Several months ago, sometime back, maybe in the summer, we have spoke, I spoke a message on spirit, soul, and body. As I said last week, that's not my, my focus, that's not my message this morning. However, we got to have an understanding of this so that we can really receive what I, what I have to say today. Releasing the anointing through a broken vessel. And we know that man, as I said previously, is, 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 is three beings. We, we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. The spirit being our inner man, and, and, and the soul being our mind, our emotions, and our intellect, our will, and even our subconscious, and everything that we have heard and seen in life is, is recorded in our soul. And then we have our body, which consists of what we call our flesh and our, and our five senses. But we want to focus this day on that spirit man, because the spirit man is where God meets us. Amen? His spirit is joined with our spirit. The Bible says that we are one in spirit, with God. This is where God meets us at. His spirit is joined with our spirit here in our inward man. Our spirit is joined with the spirit of God. And the scripture tells us that God now dwells on the inside of our temple. Our temple is, is the body of the Holy Spirit. And we talked about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. But for the anointing to be released, the Spirit of God has to be released through our soul and through our body. It has to surface from our inner man that people can see Christ in our lives. That's the whole ideal of what I'm talking about, that, that Christ live within us so that people will see the Christ that's in us. Amen. And sometimes our soul and our body, it fights against, against what God wants to do through our spirit. And God will use our soul and our body to carry out his will and his purpose. Amen? But the spirit man, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. We'll pick it up there, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. And I like what the apostle uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. He says, but we have this treasure in earthing vessels that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. He says, we have this treasure and on last week, we talked about uh, verses 1 through 6, which, which describe the, uh, this, 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 this presence that we have, or this treasure that we have in earthing vessels. And we said that this treasure is the presence of God. This treasure really is, is the word of God that God has entrusted us with. This, this, this treasure is the spirit of God living within us. It is Christ that's ready to, to shine through our, our brokenness. This is this treasure that we're talking about. Paul refers to it as, as a treasure which is very valuable. This treasure that we have is on inside of us. It's very valuable. It is very valuable. It is this treasure, but it's in an earthing vessel that must be broken. It must be broken for the Spirit of God to be released in our lives. Everybody want to be anointed, but nobody wants to be broken. We have to be broken in order to be anointed. 
Jesus was broken. I mean, he, 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 he died and he suffered. And, and, and we, we even have communion and it represents his, his, his broken body. And, and you know, and we, and we say we break this bread, this broken body, that we may be unified. So we have to be broken before we can be anointed. Everybody wants to be anointed, but nobody wants to pay the price to be anointed. There's a price to pay for being anointed. God has to break us in order to be anointed. On last week in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 14, we talked about uh, Mary and the alabaster box and, and the perfume that was in, expensive perfume that was in this alabaster box. And she, she broke the box. We know the story. She broke the box and she anointed the head of Jesus. She anointed Jesus with this expensive oil. But the illustration that we got from that is that the box had to be broken before the oil is released. The oil is released after the box is broken. So the anointing is released through us once we're broken. Once we're broken. He said we have this treasure in earthing vessels. Earthing vessels, vessels are very fragile. A vessel is very fragile. God, exactly, God designed us to be broken. When I looked at this, I said, God, you designed us to be broken. But he put something valuable in us. This treasure. This treasure, he said, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellent of power may be of God and not of ourselves. In other words, God does not want us to be occupied with this human instrument, this, this body, but, but his own power and greatness. In other words, the outward man, as you saw that circle, that diagram, the outward man, the, the vessel is weak. And, 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 and our power in this vessel is very limited. That's why we need the power of God. I need the anointing of God to so pastor of church. You need the anointing of God to do whatever God has called you to do, whatever God has anointed you to do. You need the power of God, but that power of God must come forth. Every one of each one of us have the spirit of God inside of us. Each one of us, we have the Holy Spirit. It's there. Jesus, the spirit of God lives on the inside of us. It's there. It's in this earthen vessel, but it can't come forth. Because it's struggling with, with our soul and it's struggling with our flesh. So it can't push. It's trying to push its way out. The anointing wants to push its way out. But we have to be broken just like that alabaster box. We have to be broken in order for the oil to be released. And that oil represents the anointing of God. We want to be soul winners. We need to, be, we need to have the anointing. To be exact. I mean, Jesus told the disciples, you shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea. You shall be witness to me after you have what? Power. Look, somebody say, we need power. We all want power, Barbara, but nobody wants to pay the price for it. Nobody wants to be broken. Look, somebody say, God is going to break us because he wants the anointing to flow. He wants the anointing to flow. When you've when you thrown in the anointing, it makes it easy to witness, doesn't it? It makes it, make it easy to share Christ when you've thrown in the anointing. See, there's some things I can try. Like I said last week, I can come up here and teach a Bible study. I can come up here and preach out of my soulish realm. But you won't get much from it. You'll get some, some information, but you won't get any much revelation. It won't, it won't penetrate you unless I'm in the anointing. And that's why we have to be in the norm. Everything that we do, we have to operate. What, we, what I'm talking about here on this Sunday morning, we have to learn to operate out of the anointing of God. Out of the anointing, we must learn to operate out of that inward man. That's why Paul said, I, I pray that you will be strengthened with might in your inward man. And your inward man is where your strength is at. It's where your strength is at. Your, and it's in your inner man that, that God wants to use. He will use your soulish man. He will use your, your, your fleshly man to get his will done and get, his, get things accomplished here on earth. But it comes from within. Whenever I'm not in the presence of God and whenever I'm not dying to myself. See, in order for, that, in order for the anointing to come forth, we've got to die to ourselves. Sometimes that's, that's a challenging thing, isn't it? We have to die to ourselves. Jesus, Jesus had to die to, to his self. He said, not my will, but let thy will be done. That the will of God will, will be done. I want to give a, another illustration of, 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 of a broken vessel. And, and, and I'm sure here that, 
that, that Paul had this, this, this illustration in, in the Old Testament in mind when, when he gave this. And he said, we have this, this treasure in earthing vessels. You don't have to turn here, but we know the story of Gideon. I just want to go there for a moment. Gideon in, 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 in the book of Judges, chapter 7. You know Gideon when his army was reduced to 32,300 men. And God did it so he would show himself strong. But there was a strategy that took place that, that Gideon, Gideon used. I meant to bring my jar, but I forgot I had my orange last week, but I, I forgot my jar this morning. But they had a, a, a jars of clay. The army, he, he, had, he had instructed them to, to take jars of clay and to put a, a light inside of that jar of clay or a torch. And that what they would do when they, when they approached the enemy at the appointed time, he had them to break the jar to break the vessel. And when they broke the vessel, the torch shined bright. And when it shined, the Bible says the enemy was terrified. But many believe that Paul got this illustration from that. That we have this light. We have this word. We have the presence of God. We have the power of God inside of our vessel. But in order for the power to come forth, we got to be broken. Broken sometime in the flesh doesn't feel good. Broken means we got to deny ourselves. To be broken sometimes means we got we got to deny those fleshly things that's in our in, 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 in that third part of our body that what we call the body that flesh. We have to deny the desires of the flesh. Paul says it this way, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ live within me. Now the life that I live, I live by the faith, what? Of the Son of God. Crucified. We have to crucify this old man, don't we? God has to break us. Some things he's breaking us from. Sometimes he has to break us from, from our attitude. Sometimes he has to break us from our stubbornness. You know, I mean, we, 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 sometimes we don't want to study. We don't, we don't want to get in the presence of God. We don't, we don't want to read the God, but, but God has to break us from that. Because, see, God allows some things to come in your life that will bring you to your knees. I don't know if you've ever been there. But I know that God, God would allow some things to come into your life that, that if you miss some time in prayer, God said, I got you. I know how to bring you back in my presence. And God has said, I love you enough to bring you back in my presence. Therefore, I got to allow some things to go on in your life that will bring you back in my presence. I can't stay out of the presence of the Lord too long. I'm afraid. I'm scared. I don't know about y'all, but I'm scared because, because I know God would allow some things to bring me back to my knees. God would break us, but he's breaking me, not that I would get any glory, but he's breaking me that I, that I can be a useful vessel now unto him, that he can use my vessel. See, when we gave our life to Christ, we gave him everything. When we gave our life to Christ, we gave him our body, we gave him our soul, and we gave him our spirit. Before we gave our life to Christ, our flesh was in control. That affected our soulish realm. Amen. But then when we gave our life to Christ, we have now redeemed our, our redeemed spirit. Now God wants to be in the control. And then God can use your vessel. Look at somebody say to get some things done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do y'all want to be anointed? Y'all yeah. want to be anointed? Yeah. Look at somebody say, but you got to be broken first. Yeah. Some of the most anointed people are people who've been through some things in this life. I don't envy nobody's anointing. You anointed, I praise God for you. I praise God for you. I pray God for you. I don't envy your anointing because I know that anointing came with a price. You had to be broken first. So that inner man, so that God can, can use you. That's all God wants. God just wants your vessel. God could have saved us, y'all, and took us to heaven. Y'all know that? He could have saved us and took us to heaven, but God needs our vessel here on earth, a tool, a vessel that he can work through. But in order to be broken, we got to yield ourselves to God. Every part of us, every part of us, we have to yield to God. Everything about us belongs to God. Our mind, if I'm thinking wrong thoughts, I got to get my thoughts in line with the word of God. If my flesh is overcoming my spirit, man, I got to get that under control. Because I want to live an anointed life. 
I want what's inside of me. I want, because all of us have the spirit of God, but you remember that orange I showed you last week? It's fruit, it's fruit inside of that orange, but God got to break through the outer, the outer shell. See, this, this flesh, this fleshly body is the outer shell, and then you have your soul, and then you have the spirit man inside, wrapped inside of that, but it's got to come forth, but that shell must be broken. Baby, did you eat my orange last week? I never got it back. But I brought an orange here. I, I just thought about that when I was preaching. I never received the orange back. But I brought an orange to illustrate to you what I'm talking about. It's fruit inside of that orange, and that's what God wants to get out of us. He wants to bring what's in us, what he put in us. All that word you've been receiving all these years, God wants to bring that out of you. He wants to use you as a vessel. And when we anoint it, it make it easy to witness to people because God anointed them. Then he sent them out to witness. We can witness, we can witness out of our soulish realm and out, of, and out of our fleshly realm, but it won't be effective. But God wants us to operate out of the anointing. God wants, wants us to be so anointed that people's lives around us will be just touched. Everywhere we go. That's what God is trying to get. We have this treasure that he's talking about. And, and, and earthing vessels. So that the excellence of power may be of God and not of ourselves. Look, somebody said, it's God that has the power. I want to read a quote from a book I was reading by a person by the name of Watchman Lee, who, by the way, was thrown in prison and died in prison years ago because of his faith in Jesus and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said this in one of his quotes. He said, the basic difficulty of a servant of God lies the failure of his inner man to break through his outer man. He said that's one of the most difficult challenges that we have. In other words, he said we are our own worst enemy. The most difficult challenge that we have is our inner man trying to break through our outer man. He said, therefore, we must recognize before God that the first difficulty to our work is not others, but in ourselves. Our spirit seems to be wrapped in a covering which cannot easily break forth. We have to be broken. When I know that God is trying to use me, that's why we have to get in, that's why we have to fast and pray. Because when I'm fasting, God's breaking me when I'm fasting. He's breaking me from some things. He, he's stripping some things away from me when we fast. He's stripping some things away from us when we fast and pray. Remember I said the other week, I said when we, when we had that season of fast and prayer, it's like you felt that you just felt a level, a higher level of anointing when the church was corporately, we were fasting and praying. It's like we felt, we just, it just was, a, was on another level, it appears. And it was. Why? Because God was stripping some things from us so that, so that the spirit man, that the inner man can come forth. So that the presence of God can come forth. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. So that river can flow. To others, that inner man, that inner man is what, is what God wants to come forth. All of us have some, some, some power inside of us. All of us have that, that, that treasure, that valuable treasure inside of us. When we got saved, it was, it was deposited in us. But now it's time to come forth. It's time to come. That's the most difficult thing is, is, is for it to come forth because our fleshly man, the Bible says what? The flesh lusts against what? The spirit and the spirit lusts against the flesh and the two are what? Contrary to one another. There's a constant fight. Do y'all realize there's a constant fight? You make up your mind. We, I said I'm going to fast and pray every day. I'm going I'm to pray and I'm going to fast. All of a sudden you get off to a good start. You ever seen a track race? How many of you understand track? My son used to run track, so I, I used to go watch track meet and there's certain events, and there's certain events that you didn't start out just, just sprinting with all of your, with all, everything that you have, because you're going to give out of gas. That's how we like as Christians sometimes. We start out with a good sprint, but then when we used to call it, when we hit that last lap, we used to call it the wall, they don't hit the wall. And what that means, they can barely make it. You know, they don't hit the wall, they don't gave all their energy, is gone. And they have no more energy left. And they're struggling trying to make it across the finish line. Seems like we, 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 you ever notice this? I'm just talking about the struggle we have. It seems like we start out good. Oh, you made a plan. You had a plan all written out. You had a plan. You're going to read your word. You're going to get up 6 o'clock every morning. You're going to read your word and pray for two, three hours. 
You go to pray two or three hours the night before you come home. Oh, you got it all. You got it together. Your plan is right. You go fast so many times a week. You got it all together. First week you did good. Second week you did okay. Third week you struggling. You don't hit the wall. Why? Because it's always a struggle. The inner man is struggling, trying to come forth through and break his way through the soulish man and our fleshly man. And it's always a struggle. And I remember Paul said it this way. I mean, it's sort of paraphrasing. Say, you know, sometimes it's like the things I want to do, I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. He was talking about the struggle that we have. If we want to be anointed, we got to overcome those struggles. The struggles that, that we have in our flesh, we got to overcome those struggles if we want to be anointed. I want this ministry to be anointed. I want every, each of us in this ministry to be anointed men, women, and children of God. But I know it's going to come with a price. That's why I got to keep preaching like this. That's why I, we got to keep teaching what we're teaching in, in, in Bible study. Why? Because I want everybody to, be, to, to walk in that anointing. Everybody to walk in that anointing. Man, when all of us start walking in that anointing, I'm telling you, great things going to happen. That's what God is looking for. But we got to get past these struggles that we're having for that inner man to break forth, what God has deposited in us to, to break forth. I want to go to John 12 and, and 24. The outward man, there's, that there's a shell. And God is breaking us to come to break that shell so, so that the anointing, just like the alabaster box, when the, when, 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 when the bottle of perfume was broken, then the expensive perfume that anointed Jesus was able to come out. Jesus said this in John 12, 24. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, just an illustration, I want you to get this illustration, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and what? Die. It alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth what? Much fruit. Except the corner we fall into the ground and die, it, it abideth alone. But if it die, it brings forth what? Much fruit. We know what happened there when, the, when, it, when it goes into the ground. It's, a, it's a, like a death that's taking place. Okay? The cracking, the, the, the cracking open of the shell through the temperature and the humidity that's working together in the soil caused it to crack. And once it, once it split open, the wheat begins to grow. I want you to think about your life through this illustration that Jesus came, that gave. We have to be cracked so that the spirit of God and the fruit of God will come forth. In other words, we have to be just like this seed. We have to die so that we can be anointed. Mm. I'm going to say that again because some of you, I don't know if you got that or not. But we have to die, die, that we can walk in the anointing of God. What does that death mean? Dying to ourself. How many of you have to deny yourself in some things? Hallelujah, I have to deny myself in some things. You know, somebody, somebody uh, rub you the wrong way, sometimes you got to deny yourself, don't you? You have to say, yeah, we, we had a conversation about it the other day. We have, we have to deny ourselves. And if you don't think that, that nobody can rub you the wrong way, just live long enough. Live in this earth long enough. And some, but, but, but that's just a sign that we have to die. I mean, I mean, we have to die to the spirit of lust. We have to die to the spirit of lust. But lust is a powerful thing. Lust have destroyed many men and women in the kingdom that God had to restore. Destroy their testimony. But lust is a powerful thing. But we can't overcome it. We can't overcome it. Amen. But the Bible said we must die to self that we may be anointed. There's times, as I said earlier, there's times I don't feel like reading the Bible, but it's not about how I feel. There's times I don't want to pray. I, I asked my wife this morning, I got up at 3 o'clock this morning. Three o'clock. I didn't want to. But I knew I didn't have this sermon right. And I knew that, that, that what I put on paper originally was, was out of my soulish realm. So, so God had to wake me up at three o'clock to adjust some things. I wanted to sleep like you were sleeping. 
Do you think I just say, praise God for waking me up at 3 o'clock? Hallelujah! And I did a dance? No, I did not. I got on the side of the bed, first of all, and I nodded a couple of times. Then I said, this ain't going to work. I had to get completely out of the bed. I didn't feel like it. We got to deny ourselves. You want to be anointed? You want to be a soul winner? We got to deny ourselves. We got to get in the word of God. We got we to know what we're talking about. We got to know what we're talking about. You want to be anointed? Want to be anointed teacher? Oh, you're going to have to study hours. I, I heard a, a preacher say one time, I think it was Charles Stanley, say, hey, I, I, I study 40 hours just to preach a Bible study. 40 hours. You understand what I'm saying? Just to teach a Bible study. You want to be anointed? There's a price to pay, McGill, isn't it? There's a price to pay to be anointed. You want to be anointed? You got to be broken. You got to deny yourself. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to study. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe God was telling me I shouldn't have stayed up too late watching basketball anyway. But anyway, I'll move on from that. So that's why he woke me up at 3 o'clock. I should have been, been completing my studies while I was watching the basketball game. So God said, I got you. I'm going to let you just go in that bed and get When you get in a deep sleep, that's when I'm going to wake you up because you should have been studying instead of watching all those basketball games. <laughs> God has a sense of humor too, you know. Uh, you know, God is telling me if you want to be anointed, this is what it's going to take. Want to be a soul winner? You got to turn your plate now. We all do. You want to overcome those issues that's going on in your life? You want to be anointed? You got to turn your plate down. You, you got to deny yourself. That's what Jesus did. And if Jesus was an example, he gave the example so that we will understand and know how we have to deny ourselves. It's not easy denying the flesh. No, it's not, is it? Hallelujah. Y'all, I mean, eating is one of the uh, big, best illustrations I can use. It's not easy to walk through K&S and you see that apple pie, you know, sitting there. Remember my wife, we, we, I shouldn't tell my we went one time, we had what, Tuesday night, they have the two for, two for whatever. You get a dessert and all of that stuff. And we went when we was on our fast. I shared this with you all. And we got a vegetable plate and the, and, the, and the lady said, no, you get a dessert. And I said, that's okay. The lady actually brought the dessert out to me. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deal that you get. You know, here's your dessert. I'm trying to deny myself, Kathy, and she's bringing the dessert to me at my table. Look at somebody say, you want to be anointed? <laughs> you want to be anointed? Man, that pie looked good, and I couldn't eat it. It looked good, but I want to be anointed. And when you get anointed, don't lose your anointing. Because yeah. the devil will bring stuff your way to make you lose your anointing or tempt you to lose that anointing that you have. And what I mean by that, because God got to have a clean vessel to work through. The spirit is still there, but it's got to break through all of the bondage, got to break through all the issues that we got in life. God's got to break through all of that. Sometimes suffering and, 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 and trials all through the Bible. I mean, we can't get away from that. I wish I could preach something and, and never have to deal with trials and suffering, but it's all through the Bible. It's all through the Bible. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hey, it's, all, it's all through the Bible, but he will bring us out of them all. But he wants us to be anointed. Sometimes God allows some very difficult times to come in your life. Like I said earlier, some of the most anointed people I have met in this life are people that went through some stuff. And when I heard their testimony, I was like, Lord, whew, I don't know if I want to have that kind of anointing. When you look at what they're going through. See, we just see the success, what we call success, when we see people operating in the kingdom. We see all what God is doing through their lives, but we don't see what, how God had to break them to get them to that point. Amen. Amen. I've talked to, to, to pastors who who, who, who anointed. I'm not saying that God did this, you know, to, to not as, this was not a punishment, but it's just some things that had to go through. I know pastors who lost their children. Lost their children. And, and I would ask myself a question. God, these are faithful people who love you, who, who, who serve you. Why do they have to go through that? 
but they were some of the most anointed people I ever met. Humble people. You want to know an anointed person? Let me show you a humble person. Because see, if you anointed, that means you went through some humbling experience to get that anointing that you got. And that's what God wants you to be. So that he can break through. I'm going to have to close this out. Five more minutes. Look at somebody say, five more minutes. Five more minutes. I'm going to skip over some stuff. But I want to go to the second part of those scriptures. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I want to go to verse 8. Paul says here, we have this, this treasure in earthen vessels, verse 7, that excellent power may be of God and not of ourselves. I want to go to verse 8. Listen to what Paul says here. He just said we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellent power may be of God and not of ourselves. See, Paul had to go through some trials, and Paul had to go through some things to be anointed. Listen to what it says here. Paul says, this. he says, we are afflicted in every way. But I like what it says, but not crushed. I am afflicted, but I'm not crushed. In other words, there's been some things that has happened to my life. But see, crushed means you have been stomped out. Crushed crush means that, 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 that the enemy has smashed you. But Paul says, I've gone through some things, but I'm not crushed. Many afflictions, but I'm not crushed. Some hard times, but I'm not crushed. I didn't say it was not going to hurt, but I'm not crushed. I'm not, I didn't say it's not going to be painful. I'm not saying that you're not going to cry sometimes, but I'm not crushed. I like what he says here. And then it says, and, and, and even I've been perplexed, but not driven to despair. Perplexed means that, 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 that basically, you know, that, that not knowing which way to go. Unable to find an answer. You ever been in a situation like that? You just don't know what to do. You don't, you don't know where to go. You don't, you don't know how to handle this situation. You, that means you perplex. You, don't, you, don't, you just don't know. You just say, God, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know why, but, but, but you know what? I'm not in despair. Paul said, there's been some moments I, I didn't know whether I was going to live or die. So Paul said, read the word. He said, and basically, I don't know, in paraphrasing, he said, I don't know, in some scripture, that I don't know whether I'm going to live or die from day to day. Paul did not know. We know the story. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten, and he was left for dead. He, did, he had no idea from day to day. But you know what it says? I'm not in despair. Despair means not having hope. In other words, I don't care what comes my way. I don't care what trial, I don't care what tribulation, I'm not going to lose hope. Because my hope is in Christ. Hope is a confident expectation that sustains me while I wait patiently for a future fulfillment. I'm not going to give up hope. Yes, I may be perplexed, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring, McGill. Not knowing, Ebony, what tomorrow is going to bring, but I still have hope. My hope is in Christ. You want to be anointed, Miss Barbara? Y'all want to be anointed? And this is what he says here. Persecuted, but not forsaken. How many of you know God would never leave you nor forsake you? You may think that he has, but God would never leave you nor forsake you. He knew how much you could bear before he even allowed you to go through it. He knew you could handle it because of the power that's inside. He knew that power is dead. He just wanted to bring that power out. But it's there. And he knew you could handle it. He knew, but he would never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be exact, the Holy Spirit, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise anyway. The Holy Spirit is never going to vacate our bodies on this earth. So we've been sealed. His presence is always with us. So God said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake. In the Old Testament, he was there with them, and now he's with us. But now he dwells on the inside of us. That's even, even more powerful but not forsaken. God will never leave us nor forsake us. He says, I was struck down, which means, in other words, I was knocked down like a boxer. I was knocked down, but not destroyed. In other words, I was knocked down, but I got up. I got up before the 10 count. Is it 10 count? That's it, right? 10 count? Before the 10 count. There may have been some times in my life I got, to, I got to number nine, 
Hallelujah. Mm. But I got up before 10. In other words, I may have been not down. See, we failed in some things from time to time. You know, there are some things that took us down and seemed like we was out. But you know what? I got up before the captain. Not that I could do it. It's the Christ that's in me. Inside of me saying, no, you can't lay there. You got to get up. There's no knockouts in Christ. We don't get, we don't, we don't get knocked out. We may get knocked down, but not knocked out. That's what Paul was saying. And he gone through all of that. Many churches, thousands of people came to Christ. To be exact, when we read the scriptures, the Bible says even he was so anointed while he was in prison, the prison guards were getting saved. Hallelujah. Not only that, he was so anointed while he was in prison, he said it furthered the gospel. By me being locked up, people everywhere is talking about Paul. People getting saved because of what happened to Paul. Boy, that's an anointing, isn't it? When you don't even have to open your mouth. You, you, you hundreds, a thousand miles away, people still getting saved because they're talking about you. Now, that's anointing. But ladies and gentlemen, as I close, the anointing does not come without a price. We have to be broken for the oil to come forth. But when the oil come forth, when the anointing come forth, yes, it's not going to be easy, but the power of God is going to take your life, take your vessel, and do some awesome and mighty things. Why? Because you are anointed. Let's stand and give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> I hope you understand what I was going with this today. The anointing of God. The anointing of God. We live in a time that is so much evil going on in the world today. It's so much chaos and corruption that's going on in the world today. The church must be anointed. We have to be anointed men and women of God. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Just begin to pray. Hallelujah. Just begin while you're sitting there, standing there, just begin to pray. Just begin to pray this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We believe in God for his anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just begin to pray. Hallelujah for the anointing of God. God, break us that we may be anointed. Hallelujah. Break us that we may be anointed, that the anointing will flow from our lives, that the presence of God will come through us. God, we're your willing vessels. We're vessels now for the master's use. We belong to you, Father. We're yours. You have our body, God. You have our soul, God. And you are united with our spirit. We yield our instruments, our body to you, our mind to you, our eyes to you, our ears to you, our hands to you, our, everything about our fleshly body. We yield it to you to use, God, under the anointing. Control and take our mind, God. Our mind has been renewed in the spirit of God, in the word of God. God, we yield everything to you. We yield everything to you, God. Yes, we're going to go through some tough times here on earth, but God, you'll never leave us as you said in your word, nor forsake us. And God is not about us anyway. It's about using us for kingdom work. And you're looking for anointed people that you can work through. Hallelujah, God. We got many gifts. We all have different gifts. And you want to use those gifts in the kingdom. So we thank you now, God. Someone here today, God, may have a heavy burden on their minds. Hallelujah. But we pray that that burden will be lifted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To be exact, if anybody have a spirit of heaviness on them, if you have a spirit of heaviness on you, Hallelujah, you want prayer. You're carrying some burden that's just, just, just weighing you down. We want to just pray for you this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, we thank you right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus. 
God, that every burden will be broken as we cast our cares upon you this morning, God, that you would take every care, that burden, God, that's, that may be weighing someone down, God. We pray that burden would be lifted now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, it's that burden that God wants to lift. That's part of the breaking process. It's that burden that he wants to lift from you that you can be that 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 tr that, that treasure may come out that that earthen vessel that's broken that the treasure will come out that the glory of God will be seen through your life hallelujah Jesus every bird lifted up to you in the name of Jesus hallelujah God the anointing is here to break every yoke Every mind that's in bondage right now in the name of Jesus. The anointing is here to break every stronghold. There are strongholds, halaboshika. There are strongholds that need to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Strongholds, God. Strongholds of lust. We praying against that now in the name of Jesus. Stronghold of addictions. We praying against that now in the name of Jesus. Because the anointing is here to break every yoke. The presence of God is here. We thank you right now, God, for your presence. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now we give you all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Hallelujah, Jesus. Before we close, the last thing.